Uh oh, looks like my battery's flat. Yep, definitely flat. Right, I'll just check the voltage. Get my multimeter out. Put my positive lead on the positive terminal, with the lead being red and positive marked on the battery. Set my meter to volts. Connect to the negative black terminal. And we're reading 10.1 volts. No wonder it won't start. So I'll have to get the battery charger out. Make sure you plug the charger in after you've connected to the terminals. In my case I've got a little switch on my extension lead, which is quite handy. Turn my charger on, 10.8 volts at 0.8 amps, oh that's motorcycles, change it to car, 3.8 amps and I'm going to leave it overnight. Here we are, back again in the morning, just connect my leads. And we've got 12.55, just under 12.6 volts, which should be okay. I'll just start the car now. I'll leave the voltmeter attached just to see the voltage drop. Ah, that's interesting. When I just open the door and put the safety lights on, the voltage drops. I'll just play that back again for you. Open the door. Drops down to 12.3 volts. Now you wouldn't expect that to happen, they're only small lamps. So this doesn't look very good. And lo and behold when I turn the ignition on, even worse. Drops down to 11.5 volts. And when I start it... Nothing. I'll show you that on the voltmeter. It actually drops down to 0.35 volts. I'll just show you that in slow motion. Ignition on, start, there. And it's climbing back up now, 11.4. Climbing very slowly. In a good battery, you wouldn't expect the voltage to drop much at all. And anything below 9.6 volts is pretty terminal. But really, anything below 12 volts shows that there's a sign that the battery is on its way out. So I'll just see what the voltage drop is when I turn the lights on. Voltage drops and keeps on dropping and keeps on dropping. Turn the fan on as well. And that brings it down even further. And when I turn these off it should obviously climb back up to a reasonable voltage. And it doesn't. It's still under 12 volts. One other thing that's worth checking is the connections to the battery itself and the earth lead to the body. Connections look OK on this and there's no corrosion. If there was, you'd remove that first. And to test the earth lead, you just need to move the probe to where it joins the body. See if that's the same, which it is. And on the body itself, So that's OK, and it's reading the same voltage, which is obviously too low, and it's pointless recharging it again. So in this case, a new battery is in order. Here's my new battery. Nice to see it's insulated against the cold. And wrapped in a plastic bag, in case it leaks at all. Comes with a warning notice, make sure you read that, and wear eye protection at all times. Most of these batteries are, are sealed now, so you shouldn't really get any problems with splashing sulfuric acid. Standard battery for this car gives out 680 CCA cold cranking amps with an output of 74 amp hours. But this upgraded battery, which I'd highly recommend, can give out 780 CCA and stores 77 amp hours. This particular battery is a Avata E44 Silver Dynamic. This one's got a notice on it to remove the transit plugs, so I'll do that. 
battery dimensions are 278 millimeters long by 175 millimeters wide and 190 millimeters in height and is a type 096. I'll leave all the details and a link in the description as these are very good batteries. Remove the little black plastic access panel at the side of the battery box that hides the securing bolt and bracket for the battery. Then I like to take the intake pipe off and the little vent bracket at the front which helps you lift the battery box cover away from the battery so you can get easier access. You don't have to do that but it's only a couple of minutes job and it makes it a lot easier. Lift the lid back. Ah, that's much better. It's still a bit springy. You can put a bit of tape on it if you want. Now you can disconnect the battery. Make sure you disconnect the negative lead off first. Push it clear of the battery box. And now the positive lead. Lift the red lead clear of the battery box. And as I said, use some tape to hold the lid back if you want. Now you need a 13mm socket for the securing bracket. And if the bolt's a bit rusty, spray some penetrating fluid on it first. Let that soak in. The bracket's got a little notch in, as you can see which fits into the little slot on the foot of the protrusion on the bottom of the battery. Whatever you want to call it, I've no idea. Securing foot or something. Now all you've got to do is gently lift the battery out, making sure it's horizontal until you lift it onto the floor. When you take it out, there's a little insulating sleeve around it, which will probably slip out at the same time. Don't dispense with that, you're going to fit it onto the new battery. The one I'm taking out is actually this upgraded battery, which has been in this car for over 10 years. I'm not sure how long over 10 years I've had it, as I don't have any receipts running back that far. But nevertheless, it's been a long time, and thoroughly worth it. Fit the insulating sleeve on. and gently fit it back into the battery box. Jiggling it about at the same time, making sure the sleeve fits all the way around it and down to the bottom. Then refit the bracket and align the battery to it. Make sure the little notch fits into the battery. And tighten to the correct torque. Refit the positive lead first, fitting the kinked red lead back into the battery box. And the negative lead. And the job's done. Put all the bits of plastic back. Make sure everything's clear of the engine. Then I can start it. Contact. Fire. Yay. Okay. I'm back up and running. Hope this helped you out, guys. I'll just uh, do a further test and see if the alternator's working.
14.45 volts that's okay no problem there thank you for watching don't forget to record the radio and reset the electric windows hope this helped you out guys thank you for watching please like share and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video mm.